What's going on everybody, Brett here, and we're back in Battle Brothers, the Beasts and Exploration DLC. Let's play is going smoothly. We're at a pretty amazing day, 2.15, it's in the morning. And we've just taken a patrol contract, very easy, 20 heads. They're going to pay us 6.40 on completion, which is an entire day's wages for us. And we're going to get some of these heads by taking on the Church of the Dark Priest. Before we get started, it's been a bit since i played. So let me make sure all of our guys are in tip-top shape. Um, yes, and we're doing fine. So guys, I want to share with you something that's been on my mind uh, recently, and that is the Witch's Hut. I talked about it just a bit in the last episode. I know this is a legendary location. I know it's a bit of like a an event, and I don't know if we're going to get to it this episode, but I'm going to prioritize this, guys. Um, if it's not in this episode, then it's going to be in the next one, pretty much guaranteed. And I'm going to, you know, win, lose, or draw. You know, I'm going to show you guys what that is all about. And hopefully we don't lose too many brothers. I know it's a dangerous fight. Hexen are dangerous enemies. But we're going to go ahead here and take on this group. So I think since the last time I load the save, they added Geists. So that's interesting. I didn't, wasn't quite sure they could do that. I remember uh, when we left them last time, they were just a necromancer, a fallen hero, Lots of armored uh, weeder gangers, and yeah, they didn't have any geist. But now that they have geist, that makes it kind of a whole different ball game. Let's see how we do. All right, we have a bit of a hill position. 18 enemies, not too bad. Uh, we're also, you know, not fighting at night, guys. Us <laughs> having a little bit of flashbacks to that last um, battle we did against those raiders. That was pretty that was pretty miserable. Fighting at night up a hill. And let's go ahead and release our Falcon. Kind of see what sort of position they have. They may not want to come off this position. But we can certainly make them if we would like. And because they have um, Geist, we're gonna tuck in our lone wolves just to make sure we don't rout. And they have one fallen hero with a dangerous weapon. He's pretty heavily armored as well. But oftentimes the fallen heroes will, if there's only one of them, they'll stay back to guard the necromancer. Just kind of some AI behavior that I've noticed. And I wouldn't be surprised if half of these zombies get to our front lines and die before, you know, anything else goes down. Okay, the fallen hero is going to step forward. That's equally good for us. We don't really care. Um, we'll take him out just the same. And as usual, we expect the guys to hang back. Ooh, we have a shot on the Fallen Hero at 86% chance shot. That's great. Just because he's kind of standing in a hole there. And we'll take these. Wow. Pretty, pretty terrible miss there, buddy. I don't know what you're aiming at. But the idea here is it's good to focus generally. The, um... Yeah, we'll leave him here. He doesn't need to be on the high ground. It's generally good to focus down whichever unit is being possessed. And wow, he's not even in range. Okay. That's our new brother, the Beast Slayer, Giro. And as of right now, no one's claimed him. No one's given him a name. So guys, if you would like to claim our, um, our first ever Beast Slayer, please feel free to do that. I want him to be a, you know, a recognizable brother. I love his title, Woodstalker, so I probably wouldn't change that. Uh, but just if you have a name that you'd like to submit, please do. Okay, and another awesome shot of the Fallen Hero. Great to pierce his armor like that with the crossbow. I feel like this is going to be a relatively easy fight. Just maybe a little long, a little tedious. But we don't want to go running up a hill into Geist. That just seems bad. So we'll just take advantage of our range superiority. Yeah, Gero's not really a great archer by any means. So we're using him as a crossbowman. So he can kind of have that bonus. Um, and until he gets his, his levels up, I mean, he's just going to be pretty poor all the way around. That's all right. We're, we're kind of aiming to make him our first polearm brother with, you know, a 
crossbow that he'll hold and he'll he'll end up picking it up uh, when enemies get close. And it's really just to make him something different. I think it's kind of thematic. Alright, solid hit. What are our chances to hit way up here? I'll take the 34s. And if we step up right here, we can lock this guy in place and do a split. Yes, that was a pretty nice, pretty nice pick. And now if they want to do something, they have to move forward. Okay. Alright, the guys are coming. Great. Put him down in one shot, and that lets us take two shots here on the Fallen Hero. We apply that Overwhelm, so even when he gets into combat with that weapon, um, his odds of hitting us are much worse. So three stacks of Overwhelm hopefully will protect us, because he's about to jump in, no doubt, and swing. Yeah, and he hit one of us. He hit Ivar. He actually didn't even hit his own buddy, which would have been pretty cool. We'll just try and put him down ASAP. We need to make a hole in the lines. That way we can get to those guys. Alright. Let him come in on Lance. 54% chance shots. It's not bad. One in doubt. Shoot the other guy. And this would be a good time for us to test out the holy water. I was talking to someone in the comments about, uh, you know, when it's kind of time to use the holy water. And I've been saving it just because I can't make more. If we step up here, we can do a triple swing. Wow, that was beautiful. We really need to get that kill to make sure he doesn't do like a triple swing on us. So that was the reason for me stepping forward there. But yeah, if I could make more of those Holy Waters, I would. I'm kind of saving them for even more powerful opponents than these. You know, a, a fight with a single fallen hero doesn't pre present much difficulty to us at this point in the game. Alright, slow and steady. Fallen hero comes back. We should be able to take him out before he has initiative. Okay. That's pretty good. We're just clearing him out. Yeah, nice. It says there we get his weapon. Man, if I could step up and take a swing on that Geist, I would. I think Steezy should be able to, though. Well, not anymore. This guy jumped in. Beat him down with a hammer. Okay, what can we do? Take the 95s. And we need to give Sir Varendox his hammer. Let him do his work. Alright, pretty good, not bad. We really don't have a shot, so we'll step down. Try and take a better shot there. And we can... Go ahead and give him his pole arm instead of reloading. Now we step up and we're getting close. Okay, Steezy, do me proud. Nice! That felt great. One less guys to try and scare us, and we did it before they even got a chance to do their first scream. And at this point, our morale is so good. They're going to have a hard time uh, even attempting to rout us. Yeah, and the Necromancer is thinking about running away. Alright, how many come back? Fallen hero again. It's 
It's a never ending struggle. Yeah, we took that shot because we didn't really care what we hit. Alright, <laughs> Ivar just handles business again. Lance, finish him. Nice. We'll step up on this Geist. Good shot. I think we'll try and get Edgel here closer to the Necromancer. So when the time comes, he's in a good position to, to do something. Okay, let's try and land the split. And we did, and we got both of them. That's awesome. Wolfgang's out of arrows. We'll reload him. Not even sure it's worth taking that kind of a shot on a Geist. You just, you'll never hit it. If it was do or die, I would take the shot, but it's it's just not. Ammunition costs money. We'll save some of it. We're happy as long as the fallen hero doesn't come back. He was really the only one with a scary weapon. Decapitation means no more coming back. Lance with a big hit, and now the Necromancer wants to run. The odds of that working were pretty low, but I thought I would take the chance. Okay, he's done. Alright, so no more zombies. He could, of course, resurrect them if he weren't running. Man, the general idea would be to try and get in on the Necromancer, but we really can't. He's probably going to be able to run unless we drop dogs. Do we step up? No. Alright, so a few more zombies. Dang. Alright, yeah, they're trying to stun me. Good job, Raymond. And good job, Giro. Nice. I was just thinking, I just need to get lucky. Man, I'd be willing to take the risk to try and get this Necromancer. He's probably the key to us getting some sort of good loot. I actually don't know if you actually, if you need to kill those guys to get that kind of loot. But I figure it couldn't hurt. Oh, Wolfgang, come on, buddy. And he's going to run... But not very far. I feel like we could catch this dude. Our dog's like a track star. He's gonna he's gonna make it out. He's also in heavy armor. This is Mogram. We're just moving forward. The hills are making this a bit tedious. Sorry guys. You never really know how much you can move unless you want to really sit down and, and figure the math. It's better and it's faster just to kind of like play around and see how you can move, at least in my experience. So yeah, hoping there for Ivar to get that kill to free up Hondo and Sir Chris to move in and finish him. Alright, take the shot. And we hit him, but we don't kill him. Steezy's going to move in to help the, the surround. And Hondo... 
And that should be it. Wow. Okay. Check out the loot. We got another one of these decayed great helms. I don't know if we need that. But a two-handed flail and a signet ring with a pile of gold. That's all pretty good. Considering that almost completely um, finishes our patrol quest for us. So we're going to move up through these woods. Hmm. Oh, we've seen this before. It's about the... Uh, we have a guy in our group that's a pessimist. And he's kind of bringing down the group. We'll go back to Brookstat, actually. One of these places I don't quite remember, but one of them had, like, amazing prices. And a chance to fight 15 brigands should be fine as long as we're not in the hills. And I think we'll take that fight. That's easy experience. That finishes off the rest of the heads that we need. And gives us even more loot to sell right before we get into town. So perfect. That's a win-win. But yeah, guys. So we're going to wrap up this quest. And I'm going to head straight to the Witch's Hut. I think that's that's the play. And it's something I've been wanting to, to see myself and to show you guys. Of course. Wow, he has a nice little like high ground position. Yeah, and I expect them to take pot shots at Ivar. He's a pretty easy shot in the front lines with no shield. But these guys are going to have a hard day. They have hunting bows, crossbow. Some decent melee weapons. This guy should be dead. Nope, we miss and almost kill his friend. I'll take it. 57s. Take a 67 on this guy with an aim shot, and we nail him. Let's take another one. See if we get lucky. And we do. Yeah, that felt pretty good. And you guys are about to have a bad day. Yeah. I mean, that right there was all the crowns we needed. All the heads we needed to get our quest done. Nice. Wow, that's brutal. We can step up again, and now we have Lone Wolf, so we're a bit more defensive. Wouldn't be surprised to see these dudes want to start running soon. Ah, oh, and the crossbowman wastes his turn, kind of like skipping around. Pretty unfortunate for, for the enemy. Let's take care of the guy who has the ridiculous long axe that can really, really hurt us. Yeah, and this guy has a military pick as well. Did he just injure us? I don't think so. That'd be pretty messed up if a dude hit us over the head with a wooden stick at this point in the game and really messed us up. Yeah, we can't pass up like an easy kill like that. Ivar with the decapitation of fear. Okay. Man. And that should be that should be it. This dude is gonna try and run. Hondo might be able to get him. Who knows? There's no leader or anything that we need to kill, so we'll just We'll move up, take him out as we can. be great if we could lock down this last guy over here, but I don't think we can. Oh, and of course a zombie comes back. That's actually great for us, because a zombie... Oh, there's a bush there. The zombie is locking down the archer for us. It's a pretty useful zombie. He's gonna go. Yep. But he's kind of in the way of Hondo doing his business, so it's still a little bit annoying. Yeah, unfortunately he wasn't even a one-shot type of guy, but we can get in on this dude, make sure he doesn't run. 
That's not nothing. And we'll send Sir Chris over to help. This guy should just straight up be dead. So Marinox, of course, we're going to give him his hammer. Oh, oh, the bloody mist. It's just so, like, brutal looking. I wonder what the percentage is for these guys coming back as undead. There's a... Wow, that's a lot of undead. And the archer was actually able to save himself, which is pretty cool. But it's good to know that the AI prioritizes them as well. And there we go, we locked him down. Come on, Hondo, finish it. There we go. So that's all we needed. Sir Chris and Sir Steinhardt and Ivar all leveled. Ooh, and Gero. Yeah, that's why we got to take these fights. And it's just easy crowns for us. Another long axe for our collection. Um, so that eventually if we start facing a ton of scrat, we'll have the, uh, the weapons needed to take them out. So let's head into Brookstat. And actually, before we get there, we need to make sure that we're repairing the super valuable stuff. We'll repair the long axe as well. We don't have almost any tools, so we're going to have to buy like every tool we see. We get to Brookstat. More brigands. Please tell me you have tools. They don't. We must have just bought all their tools. But they're buying stuff like crazy. We'll hold on to this, but we'll sell pretty much everything else. Throwing axes. Perhaps worth considering the keep. This is great. We're making a ton. We can sell that. Sell this. To organize a bit. And... We want to repair this as well. We may have someone who can use it. May not. The big thing for us now is we have to get tools. We just don't have any. Strength up. Okay, that helped a little bit. And yeah, that Swordmaster is still here from the last time. Tempting to fight these dudes just because they're even more free money. We could we could beat them like super quick, then come right back to Brookstat and sell their stuff. Before we catch up to them though, let's uh let's level. So Sir Steinhardt is gonna be our sword master. Hmm. Where were we with him? He's gonna eventually have Lone Wolf. And he probably also needs Pathfinder. Make him able to move quickly. Um Something like, uh, where is it? Footwork could be very useful whenever he dashes into situations he needs to get out of. Berserk also. Oh, man. So at level 9, that means we have 4 more perks we can get. 9, 10, and then we get 2 at 11. Yes, that is correct. So... Overwhelm is also great for him because his initiative is going to be so high. He'll pretty much always apply Overwhelm to whatever he attacks. I think that's going to be our first choice here. Lone Wolf would be useless on him at the moment. So we're not we're not going to take that. We'll take a 3 here in melee skill. We'll take a 5 in his initiative. Which will further increase his defensive stats thanks to dodge. And this is a huge roll on hit points. We'll take that. That uh, stacked with Colossus, they gave us 6 hit points instead of 5, so that feels pretty good. Ivar. Ivar is going to be our two-handed monster. It's kind of how we're building him out. And probably would be a good idea to get Steel Brow on him. But I kind of wanted to make him like a Berserk character, so I wanted to give him like Fearsome and Killing Frenzy. And probably Headhunter. Just a lot of really like aggressive traits. I think we'll start with Killing Frenzy. Let's go ahead and check out his rolls. A 3 in melee skill is very good. A 4 in fatigue is also excellent. And honestly considering this 4 in resolve. If we take this, we pretty much never have to take another resolve roll again. And I think that's, that's pretty good. Alright, so Chris. We're going to have to give him Berserk. Um, this guy is probably going to end up being a great tank for us. 
four roll of fatigue will take that all day long. Mm. Should probably just take the two in melee skill and be happy. And we'll take a two in HP. Call that good. But yeah, we, we definitely, whatever he is, we're going to want Berserk on him. So the last few things are going to be kind of up in the air. But I think we'll probably get him Taunt and Steel Brow. And we'll see from there what else we may want. Perhaps Underdog and Indomitable. Something like that. And that should make him a pretty effective tank. And then lastly, we have Giro, who will take Brawny on. Just to help out his fatigue. Uh, Brawny's pretty much good on every character. So another 4 roll in ranged. I like to see that. A 4 in fatigue. And... Wow, all of these rolls are so good. We'll take a 4 in resolve. We want to get that up to 50 as fast as possible. Um, just to make it so that he does it. He's not always like the guy routing in all of our big fights. But that, that felt pretty good. Let's go ahead and take these brigands. Hopefully we can get them before nighttime. Because we're going a little bit out of our way. Alright, so not the fiasco of one of our last battles, but it should be fine. We'll take those shots into the crowd and just hope to hit somebody. Oh, that sucks. Ivar is just such an easy target. The only reason he's not tucked behind a shield bro is because we brought in Kiro. That kind of messed up our formation a little bit. We want to run our, our double uh, lone wolf strat. And that just means our standard formations are just a bit weaker than they otherwise might be. I think we'll just take the easy shots. Okay, 87. Yeah, that guy is probably dead. Just one. Uh, we could really lock them down if we wanted to, but I think we'll go kind of the long way, stay on the high ground. 34. It's honestly not bad. If we just would have hit one, we would have probably killed that guy. Our damage increase, uh, thanks to his throwing mastery, would have been pretty brutal at this distance. And he had increased accuracy because he's two levels higher. So it would have been absolutely brutal if we had hit him. Whoa, throwing weapon. More throwing weapons. And they said in the patch notes that they did like a, an increase to the AI's ability to defend its own ranged units. And I think I've been seeing that. You know, my experience is a bit anecdotal, but I think it's, um, I think it's fair to say that the AI, since I started playing this game, basically when it first came out, um, the AI is just much, much better than it used to be. 23 is the best we have, huh? Okay. Wouldn't be surprised to see this dude come out of the hole to try and stop us, but then we'll get a split on him, and it'll be just fine. Alright, so Baron Dox, this guy wants to see your hammer up close, and we'll make sure he gets a chance to do that. Throw it to the crowd, hope to hit somebody. And we do. I don't see much point in exposing our back line. They need to come to us or our lone wolves are just going to start tearing them up. Yeah. They have to run. We're going to turn this fight into a 10v4. There we go. He's not having fun anymore. He wants to go home. But it's too late for that. Oh, they all retreating? Interesting. Well, 
Let's lock him down. We'll step up and we'll take the triple swing. Good shot. Wow, really good shots. That was some good luck. Look, guys, I know when I get lucky, and that was luck. That was luck, too. That's why you're not going to hear me, like, curse and scream whenever I have bad luck. I might say something like, that sucks, but I'm not going to be like, this game is broken. Any game based on percentages is going to have times where, it, like, you feel super lucky and where you feel super unlucky. Oh, the undead. It's so easy to forget about that. Oh, no, 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 no. We got to get him out of here. They deci they decided to rally just to just to mess over Hero. All right. Let's give these guys a headache. Ivar, finish him. Nope, not quite. Gero, you just run away. No reason whatsoever to risk you. Man, if we could have got that hit, probably would have killed him. And we'll lock down that guy. It would be nice if we could lock down the other, but I'm not sure if we can. So Chris gets in here for the big surround. Can Steezy make it up? No. Well, everyone's locked down. Only the undead left to fight. They'll probably whip out like little knives and try and try and get us. Ooh, that's pretty scary. Let's help. We'll drop a dog. We don't want this dude bopping uh, Wolfgang on the head. Alright, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. He's still alive, eh? That's only troublesome because it gives more opportunity for undead to spawn. And as we saw there, an undead with one of those weapons is still a pretty scary dude. Wow, we didn't get either one of them. Chris misses there, no big deal. We'll keep everybody else pretty much where they are. Um, they're able to reinforce. All we do need to do is get these kills. This guy's going to try to run. He's dead no matter what. Yeah, right now it's just all about mitigating risk from uh, respawn zombie dudes. Dragging these fights out. I feel like you probably don't get any extra experience from killing the zombies. Even though it kind of is like you fought two different enemies. Step in here and we can shoot. Alright. Can we do something about this zombie? Probably not. We probably shouldn't even have moved there. I don't remember if Ivar has taken his turn yet. He may have been able to jump up and do something. Okay. Watch like three zombies respawn. We'll run them down. I would think we'll have initiative over this. So Steinhardt is so fast. Even with his heavy armor on, he's like ridiculously fast. And yeah, this was worth it, guys. We picked up some tools for our trouble. Um, a lot of things we can sell for decent gold. And yeah, all good stuff. Now we just need to run up to Windfest. We'll do that quickly. I wonder what these guys are doing in here. It's the Militia Barracks. Yeah, we fought militia during the uh, the Noble War, 
We didn't get to fight as many of those unique groups as I wanted to. But they were pretty fun to fight. They were kind of like fighting raiders. Raiders with like a sergeant. And in large numbers, they can be pretty tough. And we definitely want to stop here because we need tools. We need to buy every single set of tools they have. We can buy some wine, some mushrooms, some grain for up to five days. To organize that so we can kind of see what we have. It's a ten day. Five days, six days. Dang, okay. Wow, they have some decent stuff in their marketplace. What are the prices like here? Wow, they're great. All right, let's sell. We can go a bit crazy with our selling. Forgot to fix that. Okay, is that everything? Uh, we want to fix that as well. We just didn't have any tools. We're sitting at 17k. If there's something awesome in this that we want, I think we'll just buy it. Um, the prices to buy, how are they? They're very bad. Um, which is unfortunate because they have some things that I would like to buy. Heavy lamellar armor would be an upgrade for our brother for sure. I don't think I would purchase that. I would probably just skip right past it. But a full helm would be excellent. Before we buy anything, however, we should definitely check uh, the weaponsmith. Holy smokes. The Robber Baron's Windblade. Wow. This could be a pretty good one, but uh, uh, we just can't afford it. We're going to have to wait. Well, guys, I think, honestly, I'm going to call today's episode just a bit short. Um, something's kind of come up and coming up right now, and I think I need to, uh, to go ahead and go. But thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. We're just going to turn this in, and then we're going to head over to the Witch's Hut at the beginning of the next episode, guys. So take care, and I'll catch you later.